Good morning. Yes, I see the time. Two, two, two. And no, I didn't just get up. I haven't been to bed yet. <laughs> I had the opportunity to do an interview from one to two o'clock. And so I only just a little over 20 minutes ago ended that interview. And rather than go to bed and try to get a little bit of sleep and then get back up to do the, to do the video at 444, I thought I'm just going to do it right now. Title for today, 2012, My Walls Fall Down. I wrote this blurb before the interview. You'll understand why I tell you that in a moment. I'm making this video following an interview with Seitu, Seitu, a journalist on Mixture of Arts Radio. In our conversation before the interview, we talked about meditation. I have a unique take on meditation, I told her, promising to share it in the interview. It was something I learned way back in December 1993 in my first ever shamanic journey. Following that amazing experience, I wrote the poem, My Walls Fall Down, which I will share here for those that may not listen to the interview. Now, for those of you that do listen to the interview, you'll know that we didn't start talking about meditation till there was only about two minutes left. I did not share the poem. I did not talk about the shamanic journey. We only brought up, she only brought up the subject, which I thought was going to happen earlier on. She brought it up at the very end, when there was no more time to talk about it. So anyway, 1993 was an interesting year. In November of that year, I did my first ever sweat lodge, which was my first journey into Native American spirituality. On the 30th of that year, I kissed my wife goodbye outside of the divorce court for the very last time. She told me she would never see me again. I never did. She told me she loved me very much. I talked to her one time after that, and that was all. Uh, that was when I broke my leg the following February. But in December that year, I did my first ever shamanic journey. And in the journey, we were supposed to go into a meditation and descend down into the bowels of the earth, as it were, or descend was the key word. We were supposed to go down and quiet the mind and do all the things you're supposed to do with meditation. Well, my mind wouldn't shut up that day, and I kept fighting it and fighting it and trying to quiet my mind and trying to quiet my mind to no avail, <laughs> to no avail whatsoever. I only was getting frustrated. I was not meditating, I was frustrating. <laughs> Then we took a break. And during the break, I was like praying, what's wrong with me? And I got the message, stop fighting your mind, observe it. That changed forever how I viewed meditation. I was always taught the standard way Quieting the mind, quieting the mind. No, I was told, observe the mind. It will quiet all by itself when it's ready to. But if it's not ready, don't force it. Just simply observe. Be in the energy, be in stillness, and observe whatever happens. In part two, we were told to ascend. And I descended first, completing part one at the beginning of part two, and then ascending after. And then I wrote this poem, 
not very long after that shamanic journey while the experience was still fresh in my mind. And I'm going to share that poem with you right now. It's called My Walls Fall Down. How often did I hear it said, love is all around. But with my fortress walls so high, that love could not be found. I argued for defenses, the lies of separation, then complained about my pain and my constant consternation. What a fool that I held on to what I thought secure. Ideas, concepts, egos, thoughts. Could such foolishness endure? I had the answers figured out. I knew what I believed. But what I knew was just part true. I was mostly just deceived. I often said that God was all and in all far and wide but I held on to doctrines framed in my foolish pride. Outside your camp, I'd heard it said, is where you'll find release. It's where the opposites are joined, the only place of peace. Finally driven by my pain and faced with certain loss, I ventured into land unknown and stood before my cross. I stood confronting choices. I wrestled in my soul. Then I chose surrender, relinquishing control. My walls fell down day by day. Outside my camp I marched, finding healing water for my aching soul so parched. I swam with whales and dolphins and sang with them their song. We dove into the depths of seas where light did not belong. But light was there and shining. In darkness I could see. My walls fell down, O oh glory, to set my spirit free. Then to the surface we came with force and changed as we broke through. Up in the air and to the sky as eagles now we flew. We soared into the heavens, we sang among the stars, a song of liberation, of freedom from our bars. My walls continued falling, love was rushing in. I was love and love was I, love covered all my sin. Now my heart knows freedom's joy where everything is one, and love is all around me, my life has just begun. I sing a universal song, a song of great renown. I sing with all creation, as all my walls fall down. I think it's appropriate that I share that, because on the, in the interview we talked about ascension. And what's required for ascension is that our walls fall down. The walls that we have erected here in our minds, those are the walls that need to fall. Until those walls fall, the external walls in our world will not fall, cannot fall, because they exist first in the mind. All of our obstacles exist first in the mind, and they must be overcome and transformed in the mind in the heart, in the soul, in our being. It's an inside job. It's always been an inside job. The changes that we look for in the world first start within. They may start by being uncomfortable outside our camp, being in a place where we don't like it, where it doesn't feel good, our comfort zone is not with us. We are outside of our comfort zone. But that's where we start to break through. That's when the walls start to really come down inside us. When we are driven by our pain, faced with certain loss, as I say in the poem. What do we lose? We lose our old way of being. We lose our old way of seeing. We lose our old way of thinking. <laughs> we lose everything that we've known so that we can gain the awakening into a realm that we had not known before, where the unconscious and the potentials become real. Wow. We grasp new things, and love transforms our lives from the inside out. And then it spreads, it's like a contagion, a good contagion. It spreads to our friends and our family. 
it spreads to those around us. Maybe, in my case, to people around the world that you've never met. But it spreads. It spreads. And it's spreading to this day. Because we are ascending. And our walls are falling down. It may not look it. But our walls are falling down. I have that assurance in the spirit as I meditate, as I contemplate. Sometimes my mind is really silent. I enter that place. I never try to force it. It just is there sometimes. And sometimes it's not. Sometimes I'll sit for 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, and just observe my thoughts, going where they want to go, resolving issues that I'm dealing with in my life. I don't have a formula for meditation that say it always has to be a certain way. I try not to do that anymore. Sometimes I do a lot of praying. Sometimes I pray silently. Sometimes I pray out loud. Most of the time, my meditations are silent. Most of the time. Sometimes I might put on music. That's much more rare. Sometimes I'm in the meditation room. Sometimes I'm outside. Sometimes I'm laying down. Sometimes I'm sitting. On rare occasions, I even get on my knees. Sometimes I stand. That's also rare. Usually I'm either laying down or sitting. It's not important the how. It's important that you're opening up your being to communion with your higher self, with your God self, with your angelic self. It's important that you recognize that you're in the state of listening and observing and open to receiving because meditation is about receiving messages, stillness, whatever you receive. Sometimes you swim with whales and dolphins. Sometimes you fly with eagles. Sometimes you're on the mountain. Sometimes you're in the valley. But what happens through it all is the walls that have kept you separate from yourself, the walls that have kept you separate from your friends and the people around you, the walls that have kept you separate from whatever you call God, from whatever you call your higher being or your source, those walls fall down and you reach a pinnacle, you reach a place of peace. Or not, sometimes you don't reach a place of peace and you don't sweat that either. I've learned that, it, that beating yourself up is never the right way. <laughs> I've done it too often to know that it doesn't accomplish anything good. Of course, it's good to be aware that you're doing it. <laughs> instead of being ignorant that you're doing it and unaware. But in any case, I pray that each of you in your life will find that you have walls falling down in your life. Things that were hiding behind those barriers are coming to the forefront so that you can transform them through love and through acceptance. That's what it's all about, folks, and I hope you take some encouragement from what I've shared today and, and the poem and I'm really tired I've been up a very long time so I'm going to say good night even though it's morning <laughs> and I'm gonna call it a day after I get the video up on Facebook and YouTube so there's still some processing that has to be done but as soon as it's finished I'm out of here <laughs> I'm going to sleep I hope God bless you namaste